And as we engage, you know, the, uh, the general public, the working class, the non-voting majority, right? We have to meet them where they are. We're going to meet people at various levels of engagement who support us, right? Some people will find out what you're doing and will watch from a distance, right? They'll like your stuff on Facebook. They'll, uh, they'll retweet you. They might send you a dollar here or there, right? Some people are going to see what you're doing and are going to hit the ground running and organizing, right? They're going to come in and they're going to go 100 miles an hour um, as soon as they step foot in the building. And, and those people, when I, you know, one of the things we might need to do in terms of meeting them where they are is getting them to step on the brakes a little, right? Tempering them back a little. Hey, don't burn out, right? Don't come in here and try to save the world in a, in a day and then get frustrated and leave, right? Um, so it, both the, the people who are at a distance who we need to pull in and the people who hit the ground running and want to go a million miles an hour, we may need to temper, right? But we got to meet them where they are and help to, to develop them as organizers, right? That's, that's, I think people tend to think that, you know, the organizer's key job is, you know, going out and, you know, based on the last slide, you know, converting people. But really, the organizer in a bottom-up movement, the organizer's main job is creating new organizers, right? It's creating people so that you can all of a sudden hand off the thing that you were doing and go do something else, right? And now we've got two people of, of you know, skill working in, in different directions and expanding our reach. Um, people are more apt, and we said this earlier, to get involved in organizing if, there's op if the opportunities align with their skills and their passions. They're less likely to show up if they're simply tasked with a job that no one else is doing or that they're not interested in. You need to make sure that you're engaging people in ways that are appropriate for their interest level and skill set, right? Um, I know a lot of people kind of shy away from political involvement because they say, well, I can't go out to a protest or a rally for whatever reason. No, there, there are a million ways to be involved, right? And they don't ever, and none of them require you going out and you know, knocking on a door or going out and carrying a protest sign. And those that do it aren't doing any more important work than you may be doing on the back end, uh, running the database, right? Um, you know, that, that database thing is something that Greens need people to do, right? We have lists, but we don't actually manage them, right? If a, a, a list manager and any, any local that could really start using our list to connect with people and give us information and, and give us, you know, educated leads on things it would be, you know, huge in any local. And it's not a job that requires you to go out, right? Same thing with someone writing press releases, someone doing social media, um, someone doing outreach, doing phone banking to turn out for your mobilizations, right? Um, so we've got to make sure that there are people that we're engaging people in ways that, uh, that are appropriate for their interest and skill level. And we're not trying to pigeonhole people into doing the things that we want to do, uh, you know, that where we need people. <laughs> yeah. Um, I've, I've seen this happen locally where um, some things will be on the back burner that are considered important. And then someone comes in and says, Oh yeah, I could help with a press release. And so somebody else goes, here you go. Here's like 12 that we were thinking of writing. Good luck with that. <laughs> and you can swim. Yeah, exactly. And, and that's the easiest way to turn people off and push them out of the party, right? Um, it's It should be um, – you should really have tough conversations about maybe this is a thing that we shouldn't do right now. Maybe we should focus on our one or two tasks like we talked about. You start with a couple of things, and then you can expand out as more people get involved. And when you do expand out, it needs to be more of a mentorship thing. Like, uh, you know, as, as we've said repeatedly – organizing is really about creating new organizers. And the way that you do that is you mentor them. You, you guide them along the way. You say, hey, you said you were interested in press releases. How about we talk about that? How about we put together a press release together? I'll show you our lists of press contacts. I'll show you how to send an email through Nation Builder, you know, whatever tools you're using. Um, and then you can train people. And then uh, not only do they feel more comfortable and welcomed into the party, but now they're building skills and now they feel confident and now they can go off and do that organizing work on uh, themselves and you can move on to mentor a new person or to do whatever else. So keep that in mind to, uh, don't, don't burn yourself out, but also don't burn out new people, especially in the early stages, <laughs> you know, uh, pace yourself. And don't leave people to sink or swim because a lot of times people will just sink. 
right? Like Garrett said, like when, when someone wants to do something, match them up with someone who has the skill set to train them how to do it, right? Um, set them up for success. Uh, you know, that, that was that's something as a, uh, as a former Montessori teacher, um, that's something we always talked about was setting our children, our students up for success. Yeah. Um, you know, and if we set them up for success, they're going to keep succeeding. Um, and this is an important spot to, to point out that, uh, um, if you, if you're a new group with just a few people and none of you in your, in your initial group are sure how to do a press release or whatever it is, that's again, where you should reach out to your state party, the national party, whatever, because we can try to put you in touch with people who can help you develop those skills. Yep. Well, no matter how I feel about the national party's focus on press releases, there are trainings on how to do a press release, right? Whether I think that's the best use of Green's time most of the time is a whole other discussion, but the you know the resources do exist. <laughs> that was an example, but yeah, we, yeah. we have trainings on a few different topics and we should develop a lot more training. So if you let us know you're interested, then we know what sort of trainings to work on. Yep, and you know, it's, it's important for us to you know, understand not in addition to the kind of, we've mainly been talking about skills, Right. But everyone's in a different phase of their evolution politically. And as a third party, many of the people who are coming to us are coming as they're changing trajectories. Right. Um, this is why political education and democratic processes are essential. So we can work through political disagreements and develop a common foundation and perspective. Right. When we're organized, I have bad news for the Internet left. Right. When we're organizing the working class, we're going to find a lot of reactionary sentiments, a lot of reactionary habits, a lot of reactionary opinions that have that they have picked up. Right? These are bad habits that we need to help them break. Um, right now, the internet left tends to prefer cancelization. Right? Um, and I'm not someone who whines about cancel culture. Right? But it's not going to work when we're doing on the ground organizing with the working class. Um, if we just write off everyone who disagrees with us, we're going to find ourselves with a very small group that's never going to be effectual. What we have to do is build these relationships, build these trusts, build education programs that can address these issues, build training programs, have long, deep conversations, and help people evolve politically. Um, and, and then once they do, once we start doing this, all of a sudden we find out that this, these education programs and these discussions have given us a really strong common foundation. And now we're organizing more as a, as a unit and more, more, you know, in step with each other. Um, so when we meet people with the, where they are, we mean both, you know, in terms of skill level and politically, um, we've got to be, we've got to be able to have these hard conversations. We've got to learn successful tactics and strategies to, um, God, I hate that I'm going to use this word, but deprogram people, right? I, I really don't like that term, but it works here, right? And we've got to be better at it. We've got to actively apply ourselves to it. We're just going to find ourselves, um, you know, spiraling into a smaller and smaller and smaller group. And that, that's, the, in many ways, the history of the left in this country, right? In the last half century, what we have seen is not, you know, a... a an expression of mass solidarity on the left, but as a mass sectarianism, as of, you know, political organizations split and fracture into a million pieces, and now we're you know many pieces instead of a, a, a unified whole. So um, it, it's really important that we're meeting people with it where they are, and we're working to develop them. Um, you know, it, it, not only as organizers, but as humans. 